Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. Um, I apologize for this taking so long to finally getting around to recording this video. Um, but I've had a lot of people ask me after my first video uh, how I went about uh, putting this linear actuator uh, on this, uh, this is an AgriFab tow behind spreader. Um, I posted an original uh, a video, a sh very short video, just kind of showed it in operation. And of course that uh, generated a lot of interest as far as people saying, how did you do this and how'd you do that? Um, so I promised a lot of people I would record this video. Uh, it's just taken me a while to do it. Um, so apologies, but, but here it is. And I'll try to keep this as short as I can, but give you enough detail if you want to try to sort of do the same thing or a modified version of this. Um, so as I said a little bit ago, this is an AgriFab, um, 110, 120 pound uh, tow behind spreader. Uh, I actually had this with a smaller tractor I had. And when I um, got my 1025R, uh, the John Deere, uh, rather than getting a three point spreader, I decided to see if I could actually use the tow behind spreader. Uh, the obvious problem uh, with this on a larger tractor or a um, like a, a zero turn tractor is it's really hard to reach back from the operator station to uh, manipulate the gate control lever uh, on these since it's, you know, you're sitting higher and it's further back. So what I was trying to figure out is like, okay, can I hook an actuator up to this? Uh, I have a similar actuator on the snowblower um, for this tractor. So that basically operates the chute control, the deflector there. And I wanted to see if I could do something similar uh, with the spreader just these 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 chinese actuators are cheap i think this was like 30 or 40 dollars i think they've gone up a little bit but um, you can get them on ebay or amazon they're all basically the same thing uh, the important thing you are looking for on the actuators though is the um, the speed and i usually give you that in millimeters per second uh, this one i think is 12 millimeters per second and that's actually the second actuator i've had on uh, this was the first one that i used um, spin that around, see if you can see it. Uh, it was a 14 millimeter per second. Uh, and you want that to be as fast as you can get it, just so you can open and close the gate uh, in the spreader a little quickly, you know, more quickly. Uh, the problem with that, and the reason I had to replace it is the one of these micro switches uh, that's inside of it went bad. You can see how the little button doesn't actually pop up like it does on the other side. Um, and I was looking originally if I could replace that um, micro switch but it's it's almost impossible to source that particular component it's going to fit on here so it was just easier to buy a different one um, the one that i did get here um, originally and there's different brands this was called eco worthy uh, and this one came with this controller and the wireless remote and that's what i ended up using you can probably do it without this but this made the wiring a little bit easier and gave me a little bit more control and i'll i'll show kind of how that all worked out uh, but this is a four inch linear actuator um, and i did not have to modify this spreader in any way uh, there's no new holes that were drilled in it there's nothing been disassembled i was actually able to get this actuator to fit onto the spreader without modifying anything. Uh, and just to give you an idea of how I did that, um, this, the, the actuators come with a, a bracket that's similar to this, you know, sort of this triangular shaped bracket. It'll come with one for each end. For the rod end where I'm actually driving the gate control rod, um, I actually just did drill two holes in the bracket itself and use these little what I call wire rope clamps. You can get like it, you know, a hardware store and it just clamps. I'll try to get as close as I can there so you can see what it is. You, you may have some of these. This is the smallest type you can get. Uh, and there's two of them on there. And all that that does is clamp around the rod so that the bracket is affixed to the actual gate control rod. And then of course the actuator attaches to the, to the bracket. On the other side, I removed this first bolt and I put a longer bolt in uh, and I did put a nut under here just as a spacer so I could get the bracket up a little bit higher so that the actuator would be fairly level, um, you know, to the actual, to the, to the shaft there or to the uh, hitch of the spreader. So that's really more of an alignment thing. You might have to adjust that depending on what tractor you have or what actuator you get. Um, but that's how I actually attached that to the, to the, to the uh, spreader itself. 
And it works out really well. Like I said, I didn't have to drill any new holes or anything like that. Now, one of the other things I wanted to do was I still wanted to be able to adjust the gate shutoff as far as how wide or how open the gate would be in the spreader. So I rigged up a little bracket that I got out of my MacGyver bin. Um, actually, let me, I'll show you what that is. I forgot, I got it out. I forgot to bring it over here. Um, I, I have what I call my MacGyver bin. Um, it's just literally junk um, brackets, plates, whatever, just uh, the stuff that you have left over after projects. And when I go digging around in the MacGyver bin, you know I'm gonna invent something. Um, but this is the, the bracket I used. You could use anything. You could fabricate this yourself out of a little piece of steel. This was, I believe, used for mini blinds. This is what you actually mount to the wall uh, and it supports a mini blind. Um, I just, like I said, I take this type of stuff when it's left over and I just throw it in my bin just so if I need something like that, I can just go rooting around and try to cobble something together. But this, let's see if I can, again, I apologize, I'm doing this on my phone, I'm trying to make this fairly quick. This just sits under there like that and it allowed me to attach a, re, a, mic, a, a magnetic, sorry, a magnetic reed switch to the top of this little bracket uh, and that still allows the thumb screw, the original thumb screw that came with the spreader, I can still loosen that and I can move this magnetic reed switch wherever I want to position it as far as how wide I want the, the gate to be open. Uh, you can see a, there's a little magnet I stuck on here and I did put a little cement on that just to keep it so it wouldn't float around with vibration. But a magnetic reed switch allows you to hook it basically an interrupt. It's just magnetic. There's a little glass vial in here with a with a switch in it, a little uh, co you know metal lead. And as the magnet grabs that, it'll close it, or when it pulls apart, it opens it. And you can put it in two different configurations, just like most any type of electronic switch, either NO or NC. So normally open, normally closed. This one is in normally open and O is how that's wired. And I'll talk a little bit more about the wiring here in a second. But basically what happens as this magnet comes up and actuates this switch, it shuts the actuator off, All right? So by adjusting the, where this is on here determines how wide, of course, that gate is gonna open inside the spreader, All right? So just to give you a quick demonstration of it, if you haven't seen the first video, just turn that on. And, and here's the, the wireless remote. I just Velcro it to the fender here. Um, Open the antenna up here just a second. So I'm only using two of the buttons on here. So right now it's actually in an open state. So if we hit the close button, you see it closes the gate, hit the open button and it opens. And it's gonna stop based on where I have that read switch positioned yeah, on the slider. So again, open or that's close and then hit the other button to open it. Uh, and this works really well. I've never had a problem putting fertilizer down or anything like that. Uh, it just happens to work just the way I was hoping it would. Shut that back off here so we don't have the fuel pump noise. Um, but again, nothing was modified on the spreader to do that. Um, I just simply used what I had laying around. I did buy that little magnetic reed switch on Amazon, I believe. And then I wired that up using just a simple four wire trailer connector, like for a small utility trailer or something. Uh, and, you know, so I can disconnect it very easily. Just unplug that, there's a little cap that goes on there. That goes up under the tractor. And remember I talked about that little controller box that is sort of the brains of the uh, actuator. That on the 1025R, there's a little cavity back here. Actually, I should be able to open that. I think I have the bolt out. off so you can see here in this cavity uh, I was able to mount the uh, controller box and then this is the wire that's coming up from behind where the plug is right now on the 1025R this will be different depending on what type of tractor you have but on the 1025R there's already a factory plug back here and this plug is for a switch that goes in this spot um, now this switch I put in um, there, there is a hole here. This switch is normally used um, if you have the electric uh, deck or yeah, mower deck 
um, raise and lower. That's where the switch would go. It's the same type of you know, rocker switch. Um, mine didn't have that. Mine has the hydraulic deck lift. So I'm actually using the joystick to raise and lower my deck, mower deck. But I repurposed that and that switch now that I put in there runs the snowblower actuator that I showed you to, in, earlier in the video. I was originally trying to hook into that and I couldn't quite get the, the wiring to work the way I wanted it to work because whenever the magnetic reed switch opens, you have an open ground. Um, so you have to kind of finagle that a little bit. I still think there's a way to do that. I was sort of getting in a hurry and I was like, well, I have this controller box. I'm just going to use that instead because that kind of solves that problem for you. So that's why I ended up using the controller box. And that also allows me to use the wireless remote, uh, which is actually handy. I can either just leave it here or hold it in my hand while I'm driving, uh, you know, and, and turn the, you know, open the, and close the gate. So that's the purpose of, of the controller box. It just fits back here. I tapped into the existing John Deere Molex that was back here to, to get my power. Um, and, and that's the way that works. So fairly straightforward. It, it really didn't take a lot of time to do it. It took more time, you know, sort of figuring out how to do it than actually assembling it. Um, but it works very easy and I, I would do it again if I needed to because it's it really solved the problem. I don't have any problem with the gate opening or closing whenever I command it to do that. So again, hopefully, uh, sorry about this slightly long video. I hope this gave you enough detail. I certainly will link some things in the description here on the video. And if you have any questions or whatever, I'll do my best to get back to you if you throw them in the comments. So anyway, hope everyone's doing well and I'll see you soon. Take care.